In Civ 6, mods are the ultimate enhancement and can completely change your game for Civilization 6. A good modding community can extend the game's lifespan indefinitely. Skyrim, which has been around as long as Queen Elizabeth from the Mesozoic era due to mods. Today we'll look at my mods, some graphics mods, quality of life mods, mechanic changing mods, and civilization mods that I would highly recommend. Comment down below which mods I might have missed and which ones are your favorite. In any case, let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at all the mods I use in every single one of my games, starting off with detailed map tags. Now, we're pretty much all construction workers at this point, as we have been planning and producing districts for the longest time in Civilization VI. Obviously, planning out your districts is one of the most important parts of the game, as if you just place them wherever, you are going to be severely lacking in the potential yields you could be making. Detailed map tax takes this a step further and shows you what your type, what your districts are going to be giving you after all the districts have been placed. It shows you all the adjacency bonuses, whether you can place the district or not, and exactly how much each one is going to give. A very good mod and I would highly recommend. After that, we got extended policy cards. This one works like detailed map tax, but instead shows the yields you'd be getting from specific policy cards. Obviously, it's only going to show yields you'll be getting that can be shown. For example, 50% settler production increase won't show you anything, unlike a tile like Natural Philosophy, which will show you how much science you're going to be making by placing in the policy card. This, like detailed map tax, allows you to forego all the math in your head and shows you exactly what each policy card would give you to help you optimize your game. The next one is a graphics mod, Hillier Hills. Hills are really not that different from regular tiles in the base game. Hillier Hills make hill tiles thicker than a bowl of oatmeal, as you can now tell exactly which tiles are hills and which one aren't. The next one is Luigi's Unique District Icons. Pretty simple mod, doesn't change anything except all unique districts have their new specific icon. It's a quality of life mod, but not really the most important. After that, we got the Quick Deals mod. This is by far my favorite. Instead of having to spend a fortnight trying to maximize my deal with the AI, this mod will allow me to see how much the AI is willing to give and allows me to immediately make deals on one screen, getting the best possible value for my stuff. Repeat Project is the next one, another minor one but very helpful. If you have hundreds of cities in the late game, it gets exhausting telling each one to go campus research grants or theater square projects every single time. This allows you to pick your project once and it will automatically repeat until you switch away from that project manually. Sucretax Global Relations Panel is next. Essentially, it just shows you exactly who's friends with who, who's allied with who, who is at war and denounced all in a nice little screen. Z's Fewer Trade Offers is the last one I'm talking about. Instead of the AI asking you if you'd be interested in a trade agreement with England every three turns, it's now increased to every 10 turns, which is very helpful and <laughs> has it so that you're not constantly annoyed by the AI's offers. Now, let's get into some graphics mod that a lot of you, especially Civ 5 veterans, would extremely appreciate. The first one is called Environment Skins Civilization 5. Civilization 6 to this day has people who hate its art style. This mod rectifies that as it was made by a Firaxis developer actually. This essentially gives the environment a more realistic feel and shows a Civ 5 style of graphics throughout the map. For those of you who are still stuck in the Civ 5 era or just hate the cartoony nature of Civ 6, this mod at least fixes the environment which overhauls everything. Mountains and rivers, the regular tiles, all look less cartoonish than the base game, and for those who really can't get invested in their games because of the lack of realism, will love this mod. Detailed Worlds is the next mod for geography lovers out there. It doesn't really make sense to have desert sp spawn two tiles away from the tundra. It, 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 it's just, it's just geographically doesn't make sense. This mod fixes a lot of the geographical problems with the game's map creation. It's not more, it's not perfect or anything, but it does have it so that desert tiles start a lot farther away and towards the center like they should. It also adds in realistic coasts with coves and bays and stuff like that, while also placing tiles in realistic locations. 
Whereas if the base game has one grassland, one desert, one tundra, you, you might as well have a goddamn moon tile adjacent to them at this point. This fixes a lot of the problems and has each and every tile geographically realistic for the most part. The final one is going to be the yet not another Earth Map Packs mod. It's a certified hood classic at this point and gives you a giant array of map packs as well as mods for modern day maps of continents like Africa, Europe, regions like the Mediterranean, which are handcrafted by the mod maker and are very accurate. There are a lot more detailed than the official Firaxis Earth mod, and I highly recommend getting this mod if you're trying to do something like play on a real Earth, TSL, restore the Roman Empire, or Ottoman Empire, like our next video. This also gives you multiple start options like TSL or to start near historical cultural groups. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much the Earth Map Pack mod. If you're enjoying the video so far at this point, leave a like and subscribe to not miss out on future content. And uh, yeah, let's continue with the video. Next up, we have some quality of life mods. Mods that really don't change too much, aside from the fact that it makes your game a little bit better. The next mod is the Real Era Tracker. It's great for error score as you can see exactly what error score you have obtained, how much you need for the next age, and exactly what you could do to either get the Golden Age or to avoid one and get into a Strategic Dark Age. The final mod is a very quick one and it is Colorized Historic Moments. It adds in vibrant colorization to all the historic moments you could get throughout your game. It's a really fun mod to have and the coloring and artwork is absolutely spectacular. It's pretty much a quick mod that colors everything and uh, it makes it a lot more interesting than the current bland black and gold it really is right now. The next mods we're talking about are mechanic changing mods, mods that completely revamp the mechanics of the base game and make things a lot more interesting. First one is going to be Sucretax Oceans. Now, this is a mod that I always use. It's great, honestly. It makes oceans a lot more vibrant, giving them more resources, bonus, luxury, even sort of terrain tiles like forests in the form of kelp. It is also compatible with the Monopolies and Corporations game mode, which is probably the best thing about it. It's a great mod to have and makes oceans a lot better and more vibrant. The next one is called Sui Generis Regional Groups and Bonuses. This splits every civilization into different regions, like Central European, East European, Native American, American, South American. It just splits everyone into these regional groups and gives them bonuses depending on that group. It really helps you spice up your game, and unlike a lot of the other mods, it really isn't anything too broken. Like, for example... The Ottomans are part of the Turkic group, which has the Turkic Migrations ability, giving them 10% production in the capital for every conquered foreign capital, and when a city gains population, you receive gold based on how many citizens follow a religion other than your dominant one, as well as unique tile improvements are not lost when conquering cities. These are very much good bonuses, but they aren't exactly completely game-breaking. There is a list of all the different cultural groups, and they are very compatible with civilization mods. For example, a lot of these groups don't have base game civs, but when you do get mods for some things, a lot of the times they are going to be compatible with this mod, and they will get the same exact bonuses. The final mechanic changing mod is called Thrones and Palaces. This is also a very, very blast from the past deja vu style from back in Civilization 3. It was 1 to 3 where you could customize your throne room as well as your palace in Civilization 3 and 1. And when I did my Every Civilization Game Ever video, it was one of the best parts from the original 3 Civ games. This one brings it back to Civilization 6 and it has a lot of customization options for both your throne room and palace. And it is definitely one that... Well, it won't change your game in any sort of capacity. It is really great for sort of building up your palace throughout the ages and building something you can be proud of. And here comes the fun part, civilization mods. These mods add different civilizations throughout history, whether they're super well known like the Soviet Union 
or they are completely obscure like Iceland or Tahiti, there is a large selection and I'm going to be giving you four of my favorites right now. The first one is going to be the Silly Mustache Man's Daddy, where you could either pick Stalin or Lenin. Stalin's ability is called 10 Victories. You get double yields from pillaging districts and all combat units receive 50 health points upon capturing a city, kind of like Alexander's ability. And you also get the T-34, which is a unique tank replacement that gets 10 combat strength when fighting in a district. Lenin, meanwhile, has Proletariat Revolution, which gives great engineer and scientist points per active cultural, economic, and research alliance, which is doubled at level 3, and you get 25% alliance points after researching the class struggle civic. They both have communist nationalism, which means building their campus and industrial zone gives them culture and tourism equal to half of its output, and you build these districts 33% faster. The Pakoda is the unique unit for both, as it costs one less movement speed to pillage, and is an infantry replacement that is two gold per turn cheaper. The Nakagrad is a standalone district that is pretty much science, as when you build it, you get 50 science per appeal of a tile when replacing a farm with this district, so you do get the Ukrainian famine with this mod, which is, uh, okay. You also get two great scientist points and an additional science for each adjacent neighborhood and production towards space parts. Very cool mod to have. It is a little broken. Moving on to another one that's less broken is the Iceland mod. The leader is Engulfer R. Narsun. Definitely said that wrong. Settlers and recon units receive movement and sight. Cities on tile with charming appeal receive loyalty equal to the tile's appeal. And when placing a district on breathtaking tiles, you receive a burst of production towards that district. The Iceland ability is Sagas of the Icelanders. Historic moments give you great rider points, and natural wonders, geothermal fissures, and volcanoes provide appeal to adjacent tiles, and amenities if at least one is present in the city. Lost Speaker's a unique great person, and their abilities augment your great works of writing. The Torf Buyer is a unique district that replaces the aqueduct, giving you housing, food, production, as well as more depending on the appeal of the tile. And the next sieve is going to be a really leader replacement, Hannibal Barca. His Hannibal Ad Portas gives him during peacetime 10% production with garrison units, and during wartime, all Phoenician units re reduce adjacent combat strength of adjacent enemy units. Mediterranean colonies, as well as the Byream and Kothan, are from the base game Carthage, but he does have the African Forest Elephant, which replaces nothing but does start with a free promotion. Next up, we got Leonidas, who's another Greek leader. He has the Acropolis, Hoplite, and Plato's Republic, but his unique ability, come and take them, doubles flanking and support bonuses for units, and cities with an encampment get three amenities. These are just some of the mods. The mod makers I'd recommend you try out and pick the mods for civilizations you want are Gidimo's Workshop, Sukratax Workshop, and JFD's Workshop. I do like all of them. And uh, yeah, you could go in and pick the civilizations you specifically like. Leave a like and subscribe to not miss out on future content. And let me know down below which mods are your favorite and which ones I should check out. Without further ado, I'll see you all in the next video. Check out my other videos. Peace.